Have I told you I love you lately? <laughs> I love you, church. And to all those that are in our Zoom, I love you too. I love you also. Virtual hug to all of you, those who are joining us. Thank you all to the brothers who uh, lead a while ago. And before I forget, happy Hearts Day. Feb 14 is just around the corner. So love is in the air. And since love is in the air, we'll be talking about love <laughs> and everything in between. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, can we all smile? Can you say to the person beside you, I love you? Now, there was this, uh, a wife um, asked her husband, how would you describe me? So the, uh, the husband replied, I will describe you as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. I think that's 11 letters, brother, 11 letters. So the, the confused wife asked the husband, what does it mean? <laughs> A, B, C, D, until, until uh, K. So the husband replied, you are adorable, you are beautiful, you are cute, you are delightful, you are elegant, you are fashionable, you are gorgeous, and you are humble. Wow. Husband, have you described your wife like that? <laughs> and the wife said, of course, she was very happy. Oh, thank you very much. But you're missing three letters. How about the I, J, K? Oh, the husband said, I'm just kidding. Just to break the ice. <laughs> anyway, again, uh, I love you, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, if you want to learn about life and life's perspective, you know, growing up, I learned about life by visiting three places. Prison, hospital, and the graveyard. So those places will give you a better perspective about life. It teaches you a lot of things, actually. It teaches me gratefulness. It teaches me about the brevity of time, the brevity of life, the shortness of life. It teaches me about priorities in life, what matters most. It teaches me about love and other things that are important in life. You know, visiting a hospital once and praying for the sick, one relative of a patient, the patient, he has cancer, and then the, the relative told us that uh, the patient is dying very, very soon. But the truth is that we all are. We are all dying, right? And let me read to you a, uh, a message. Actually, this is a, the message of Brother Ed. While I was sitting there, I uh, recall his message. Because during his birthday, we greeted him. And his reply was this. Brother Ed, if you don't mind, I will read your, your reply. He told everybody in the group chat, Thanks, everyone. I am at an age where each day is a day closer to meeting our Creator. That's exactly his words. And it stuck into my mind. I think we all are. That every day, we are actually a day closer to meeting our Creator. We just don't know when. Right? So we are all dying. Maybe 
if most people would embrace that truth, this world might be a better place for all of us. You know, because survey had it, when you ask people about what they will do, when the doctor tell them, tells them that you have this certain time in your life, and a huge percentage of people, they replied that they will be a better person. Just a very small percentage of people saying that they will pursue whatever they want in life. Whatever, what, whatever makes them happy. Whether be that be good or whether be that be bad, I don't know. But you see, if we just embrace the truth that we are all dying soon, this place again will be a better place because most people would be better if they know when they are going to die. Now, can I ask everybody, I think I did this before in our Zoom way back. Can I ask all of you to close your eyes? Everybody, close our eyes. Close our eyes. Now, open our eyes. Have you noticed anything? Did you see anything? Now, basically, none. Okay. So my point is, the point is, we are at the mercy of God's hand. We are actually in God's, you know, we, we plead to God to give us another day. Every night, we go to our bed, when we close our eyes, we ask God, Lord, may you will it to give us another day, another chance in life tomorrow. You see, when you go out, the reality is when we go out of this chapel, we don't know, to be honest, if we will arrive safely at home or not. And that is the truth. When you close your eyes, just like what we did, we do not know if we're going to open our eyes. When we close our eyes every night, we do not know if we are going to open our eyes in the morning or not. I have seen that happen, and I know you've seen that happen. Unfortunately, you know, even if people know that life will come to an end at a certain point, they still choose not to become a real Christians, not to become a real servant of the Lord. You know, because what they want, the problem is, what people want is they want a specific time. A specific time wherein their life will end. Let's say one week, one month, one day. If they knew that, ah, they will become a better person. But the problem is, they would rather believe a certain individual created by God than believe in our own God who created all of us. They listen to doctors, of course, but they don't listen to God who created that doctor, who given that wisdom to the doctor. We tremble, we fear, we cry, when the doctor tells you or your relative that you have this only time to live, we cry. We tremble in fear. But when God said that soon we are destined to die, we don't tremble. We just laugh at God. We just mock the very words of our Lord that your life will soon to come to an end. You see, but when God said, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. It only means that our life can, can come to an end at any time of the day. Jesus is telling us that we should arrange our life accordingly, according to God's will. But as, but as far as many are concerned, you know, we just don't take this seriously. We rather take the doctor's advice seriously, then take Jesus' words 
right? Now come to think of it, these were the very words from our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, by taking God for granted, as I have said, we are actually mocking God. As if His words are not true. Now, since God knows that we are dying, God Himself made a remedy that would be available to all of us because He doesn't want us to suffer eternally due to our sins. And that remedy is love. In Tagalog, pag-ibig. In Spanish, amor. Am I right, Brother Carlos? Amor. So this morning, we will be talking about extraordinary love. You know, the core message of the Bible is about God's love. From the creation in Genesis to our future as revealed in the book of Revelation, it is all about God's love towards you, towards me. In John 3.16, it encapsulated the core theme of the Bible when Jesus said, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, this verse tells us so many things, so many important things. Number one, it tells us who God is. God is love. Number two, it tells us that Jesus is an obedient son. He obeyed his father and died on the cross. And number three, we are all sinners. Now, Jesus would have not died if we were not sinners. Number four, it tells us the justice of God, that there is eternal punishment. And people, they mock the justice of God. Number five, that there is a reward for our obedience, and that is eternal life in heaven. And mind you, brothers and sisters, this is no ordinary love. This is no ordinary love. This is an extraordinary love. Now, what differentiates an ordinary athlete from an extraordinary athlete? The word extra. The word extra. Now, the word extra, it actually means going to a greater extent. More. Going more than usual. It says to be exceptional. To be exceptional is going beyond the normal. Now, we're going to break down John 3.16. And we're going to learn a lot about love this morning. First and foremost, <clears throat> it talks about universal love. When God said, for God so loved the world, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means God's love is for all. It does not exclude anybody. This love of God covers His mercy, His kindness, and forgiveness. It talks about God's blessing made available to all. In Matthew chapter 5, 45, that you may be children of your Father in heaven, He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. You see, we normally or usually we give good things to our friends, to our family members, right? To our relatives. Uh, you give gifts to them. Everybody, everybody does that. But Jesus taught us that God gives good things to all. No exemption. And this is God showing us His extraordinary love. Extraordinary kindness towards everybody. God does not choose whom He will give the Son. God does not choose whom who will, He will send the rain to. He gave it to all. In a like manner, we are taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, as we are all His servants, to do the same. Okay. Do the extraordinary love by doing or by being an extra, uh, by, by, by being extraordinary kind of all. As we have said, you give good gifts to your good friends, to your friends. But Jesus, Teach us this. If you love those 
those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Now, Jesus said there is a reward if you do, or Jesus said that there's no reward. I mean, there's no reward if you just do the normal things. Because everybody's doing that. The reward is doing the extraordinary. Now, as you can see in the verse, the, the observation of our Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, what are you doing more than others? More is the extra. What are you doing extra? What are you doing exceptional to others? Now, that is what differentiates us from the world. Because the world, they only love those who love them back. But Jesus tells us, love those even that hate you. Go beyond the usual abnormal. God showed us his extraordinary love through his extraordinary mercy and forgiveness. As Jesus continued, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For God so loved the world tells us that God's mercy and forgiveness is for everybody. It is not just available for a chosen few. Now we have seen how it was in the Old Testament, even those who oppose God, His forgiveness were available to them as well. Many don't worship the Lord during those times. And we have studied the book of Daniel. But when they repented of their sins, God forgave them. And God took them in. Now we have seen how God offered his hands of reconciliation to them and forgiveness. The problem is, it is only us who ignore that hands of reconciliation by our Lord. Now when Jesus told his listeners, but I tell you, what does it mean? It means it is a command by our Lord and Savior by our Master. A command that must not be ignored and must be obeyed. He says to love our enemies. Extend the hand of reconciliation and forgiveness to those who hate you, to those that are your enemies. To pray for those who persecute you, those who hated you. You must speak blessings on them as you pray for them. Then Jesus said, then you may be children of your Father in heaven. And this is what separates you from others. You are a children of God, and they are not, according to the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the normal, the usual is, they love their neighbor, and they hate the enemies. Right? But Jesus said, he repraised it. Now, let me rephrase that. But you, all of us, being extraordinary individuals, because we are Christians, we are true servants of our Lord, you must love your neighbor, and you must love also your enemy. Again, that's what differentiates you, what differentiates you from the world. You love your enemy. Go beyond the usual, and the normal. Therefore, you will be an extraordinary individual and you are doing and giving an extraordinary ordinary love that Jesus or that God the Father had given to us. Second, sacrificial love. When Jesus said that he gave his one and only son, and this is what the Bible called the agape. Agape or agape. It is a selfless, 
immeasurable sacrificial love. God's perfect unconditional love, it is the highest form of love. Jesus Christ lived agape. He lived out agape love by fully humbling himself and becoming human with full acceptance and sacrificing himself on the cross for the sins of this world. You see, God is teaching us the extraordinary sacrifice of love. Why extraordinary sacrifice? You see, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the normal thing to do is they would sacrifice an animal for the atonement of their sins. Okay. Every time that they committed something terrible in the sight of God, they would sacrifice an animal for the atonement of their sins. Atonement, it means to cover. Okay. Atonement, to cover. So an animal sacrifices only covers their sins, but it does not remove <clears throat> their sins. That is why they needed to sacrifice animals over and over again to cover for their sins so that God's anger will not burn on them and it will appease God. In Hebrews chapter 10, 4 and 11, the Bible tells us it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. In verse 11, day after day, Every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. Now, to finally take away the sins of mankind, God needed an ultimate sacrifice. A one-time sacrifice that once and for all will remove our sins. God found it in his only son. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. It talks about Jesus Christ, who once and for all was sacrificed for our sins. You see, God did not use normal or usual sacrifice that must shed its blood. No. No ordinary animal. It's not the usual thing that they do in the Old Testament. No. God used an extraordinary sacrifice. He used Jesus Christ, His one and only Son. He sacrificed His only Son to shed His blood once and for all so that you and I can have a taste of heaven. Now, of course, it needs our faithfulness to our master. And therefore, having that forgiveness, God's wrath will not be fall on each and every one of us. Now, on the other hand, Jesus showed this extraordinary love to us by accepting to be sacrificed on that cross for our sins. So you and I, again, will have a chance of heaven. Greater love had no man than this, that a man or a man lay down his life for his friends. You see the word greater used by our Lord Jesus Christ. Not the normal or the usual thing that a man will do for someone, but Jesus did it for you and I. That's why it is an extraordinary sacrifice. Extraordinary sacrificial love. Because Jesus Christ himself, greater love hath no man than this. He laid down his life for you and I. And that is not normal. That is not normal. Therefore, as Christ's servants, we must go beyond the usual and normal. The Bible tells us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 And for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Now, because of our sins, it separated us from our God. We fall short of that glory of God and thus brought us eternal death. Now, there is now a great chasm. There is a great divide between us and God. Now, what God did was He provided a way for us to cross that chasm, to cross that great divide that divides you and God. And it is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, therefore, being a bridge so we can cross over to the other side at the later part in our life. We now have to do our part. In the plan of salvation, God did His part. Jesus did His part. Now, what are we going to do? You must do your part. We must do our part to obtain that salvation. Our part is now through a response of love. This is what happened because of our sins. It separated us from God. There is a great chasm between us and God. Because of God's great love, extraordinary love, extra sacrificial love, He provided Jesus Christ so that we can cross over the glory where God is. Now, therefore, what is our part? God, Jesus, did their part. What is our part? Our part is a response of love. It must be a response of love. John 3.16 tells us that whoever believes in him, believe it comes from the Greek root word pistis. That is where we get faith. The word faith, meaning to have faith. To believe is to have faith. Now the question is, is it only believing? No. Just believing in Jesus' name is what ordinary people does. Many ordinary people, they just believe in Jesus' name. They just believe that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. They just believe that Jesus was crucified to take away our sins. They just believed that. They knew that. But they never obeyed Jesus Christ. Because they are ordinary. But you, you are not ordinary. I know that you are not ordinary. You are extraordinary because you don't just believe, you obey. And that's what separates you from the ordinary. That's why our response to that sacrifice, to that great love of our Lord Jesus Christ, is also love. Love that is extraordinary. Because we not only believe, we obey. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many ordinary people will call upon his name, especially when they are dying. I'm sorry to say, but that is the reality. But Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. God is not looking for that kind of response. He is looking for those who respond out of genuine love as well. Love that is obedient. That's why Jesus said, but only those who does the will of his father will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, therefore, Everyone who hears this word of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. It is very clear, my dear brothers, sisters, and friends, 
but the normal crowd they hear the good news but the, but they never practice what they heard now what differentiate a real christian from that of fake ones i would say who brand themselves as christians is that real christians they hear the words and put them into practice they live out they live a Christ centered life. Now, those pretentious ones, they hear and they never live out the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And did you know what Jesus calls them? Jesus calls them foolish. Foolish. And soon they will crush. The words of Jesus Christ if you love me, obey my commands. Now, let me ask you this. Do you love Jesus Christ? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Now, if you love Jesus Christ, he said, obey my commands. Obey my commands. In the great love of our Lord, there is the reward of love. And what is the reward of love? Shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know, with God's extraordinary love, with God's extra sacrificial love, with our extraordinary response, believing and obeying God, comes the reward of that love. And that reward, mind you, it is not ordinary. That reward is extra or denied. Now, typically, during Valentine's Day, what do men usually give their, their, their wife? Manuador. What do you give to, to Manal for Valentine's? What do you give her? You know, many, many, many people, they, they, they give out chocolates, uh, roses, right? And they go to uh, fine dining, right? Fine dining. But, you know, of course, when you work hard, of course, normally, uh, you would do that. And normally, when you work hard, you will reward yourself, right? People, they reward themselves by buying uh Gadgets, buying cars, or, you know, sometimes they build a house for the family. Of course, of course, you deserve that. But for God, you know, our ultimate reward is not common. Jesus said, my father's house has many rooms, mansion, in other translations. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Jesus is preparing. This is wonderful. Jesus is preparing an extraordinary place for you. You know why? Because you are extraordinary. Because you are extraordinary. A place where there's no, you know, a place that's pure joy. Revelation 21, verse 4, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And their wall, the wall of that city was made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stones, the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light, and the Lamb is its Lamb. See, what a wonderful place heaven is. Who wants to go to heaven? <laughs> I will not ask the second question. 
You see, heaven is waiting for you. Are you excited to go to heaven? You know, sometimes when I lie down at night, I'm contemplating about heaven. I'm thinking about God. I'm telling my God, Lord, soon, by the grace of God, I will be there. But not now. <laughs> you see, I can't imagine myself, you know, comparing that reward for anything else. Now, on the other hand, the consequence for our stubbornness is also extraordinary. It is an extraordinary place in hell. No place like it as well. No. In the Bible, Jesus speaks of hell as a place of eternal torment, where the wicked are thrown into a fairy furnace where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. It also described as a place of punishment and suffering. Now the question, why would I want to go there? Why would anyone would like to go to a place like that? Now as we celebrate the month of love, let us not forget God's extraordinary love for all of us. We must respond with an extraordinary love as well. Brothers and my dear sisters, heaven is waiting for all of us. Soon, we will all be home. See you home soon. And for those who have not yet received our Lord Jesus Christ, your obedience to your master is an utmost importance. Hear his word and obey it. If you truly love Jesus Christ, then you will obey whatever he tells you to do and have a place in heaven as well. Now, why go to eternal punishment when you can go to eternal joy in heaven? My dear brothers and sisters, the message is yours. I hope that every one of us will continue to love one another and will continue to love our Lord, Savior, and Master, Jesus Christ, until the last of our breath. Shall we all stand as we sing the song of invitation?